good. It's gonna be live. There's a bit of a delay, so I started a minute early. <laughs> so therefore I will wait uh, at least until we officially hit 7.30 for me to start doing my introduction. But hello chat, um, welcome everyone. And I am really, excuse me, I'm really excited. Actually, while I'm thinking about this, let me pop out the chat so I can have that there. And let's see, get the chat right. But I'm like waiting. I'm waiting for it to actually go through. Stream is helping. I'm like waiting for the uh, analytics to start showing. So uh, yeah, if you hear me already, let me know. Um, okay, well, huh. Cause it's not, it's not, um, it's not doing the, the thing. <laughs> Wearing the same shirt, it's from Old Navy. <laughs> Um, but yes, if, if you are, I mean, I guess you can see me, so that means it's working, but I'm not, my, um, backend stuff is, okay, now it's starting, it's weird, um, okay, you hear me? Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, hello everyone, and good evening, and welcome to a little late, but better late than never, uh, February 2021 Chemnitz Dialogue live stream. Tonight, I want to dye some yarn inspired by these flamingos. Uh, these colors are just vibrant and fun, and I thought, gosh, there's so many different hues of like peach, orange, and pink that you could draw from from this photo. And the reason why these dialogues are so much fun is that uh, I'm inviting all of you to die along with me using the same inspiration photo. And you can create the same kind of colorways that I'm gonna play with tonight and try to duplicate my results. Or uh, you can create whatever you want inspired by this photo, whether you just stick with the bird um, or the legs of the bird that you see there in the backdrop or the whole image. It's what how you are inspired. And then I will pick a bunch of photos that you guys of your yarn that you dyed or fiber or shirts sometimes people do fabric and then in the live stream recap that will come out mid to late march i'll include some of those photos so the way to submit pictures is to use the hashtag chemnitz dialon on instagram or you can reply with a photo comment to this photo on the public chemnitz facebook page there's a link to that photo down in the video description and so you can just reply to that with a comment and then I'll pick a bunch of photos. Now, if you share your pictures in the Chemnitz Lab Facebook group, by default, uh, all things shared in there are kept private per the group rules. So if you wanna share things with the community, but then not be featured in the video, that's a nice way to do it. Um, uh, well. You didn't realize that the, the beak had, oh yeah, I guess it does. Wow, I guess it's almost more of like a blued steel. There's some hints of like a bluish gray in the, in the beak of the flamingo. Hello, everyone. <laughs> hello, hello, oh my goodness. Uh, I am just really, really excited. So I, so I, I am down to one webcam, mainly because I gave my other webcam to my husband who has been using it for Zoom uh, this whole year. Uh, so we'll see if I'll be sticking on the counter. I will be heating things on the stove, but we'll see. I'm, my, <laughs> I set up two tripods, so I might try to like walk the camera over. We'll see how this goes. That will probably be awful audio when that happens, but I, so I haven't tested it. <laughs> with the camera rolling. I've just tested it with the preview. Uh, so that 
is that? Oh, and I want to make sure that I can see all the chat. Okay. Hello, everyone. Wow. Ooh, and in Wales, it's very late right now. So I'm impressed. <laughs> Although I guess it's early still. It's only 730 where I am. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll get started in just a moment. Uh, and then during some of the downtime, I have some things to unbox, some Prezzies that I bought myself. Uh, and yeah, I since like I had hoped for 2020 and 2021 to finally get to like travel a bit and go and go to like both in and live in New York or something, start traveling, and that didn't happen. And so I decided to um, treat myself. And so I have um, some little presents to myself from Bernie Parker. And then I also snagged a uh, collaboration with um, from Lola Bean Yarn Co. And so I'm like very excited. So these are things that I purchased myself. It's not like sponsored or anything, uh, but I'm, I'm very excited about it. Yes, but all right. Uh, oh, and I guess some other information at the top. If you're a huge fan of Chemnitz and want to support uh, the content here on the channel, there are a few ways you can do that. There's always links in the video description, links that I probably haven't updated, but there should be links to the Bear Yarn um, companies that I use, affiliate links like that. Um, and then I also do have an Etsy shop uh, where most of the yarn that I die in my videos ends up in my Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations. And I also have a Patreon. Uh, so you can find links to everything down below. <laughs> You're a night owl. I am not. Uh, I, ha I frequently fall asleep pretty early. Um, so, oh, actually, maybe I don't want my camera to go away just yet. But I did not set up my counter very prettily. Uh, I'll just move myself. <laughs> Tiny Rebecca now. Uh, so I pulled some colors and I figured we'll start in a way I love starting in these live streams uh, doing some crude swatching. But since I'm going to be doing it on the countertop, things will be cold. And as, excuse me, <laughs> sorry, uh, as you've seen from some of my crude swatching videos, some colors do shift. Uh, when you go from cold to hot. Uh, and so that's something that we might observe. I'm not necessarily looking for breaking. I'm looking more for the hues in the colors here. Now, especially at night, the what, when the webcam, I think, is trying to overcompensate from the yellow lighting in my house, reds and purples don't always come through really well. And so that's one reason why I do the live stream recaps at the end or like a weeks later so that way you guys can see what the colors like actually look like uh but i did pull i don't know if i'm going to use some forest green i have my other dyes maybe i'd even pull a little bit of emerald green if i'm going to go for those greens and pinks uh and i have some true black in case i want some beak like speckles i don't know yet if i'm going to go that way but i pulled them just in case and then in terms of the other colors, let's see if I can read them looking at my monitor. I have peach blush. Uh, I have tangelo, which I pulled because my recollections for it is that it didn't give me a or real orange color. It gave me more of a pinky orange. And so that might actually be a really good candidate for that bright orangey pink on the head of the flamingo. Uh, I pulled antique mauve. I don't think that's a color I would use, but it's sort of in that pinkish family. And I didn't want to pull any like hot fuchsias or deep magenta. Those I knew would be not only the wrong tone, but too bright. So I didn't pull those. Um, I've got ballerina pink, valentine blush, and then of course, flamingo pink, which looking at all of them, given the like the peachiness of this pink that I see in this flamingo, I have a hypothesis that I might lean more towards the tangelo and peach blush, but I am saying this just looking at these, like the paint, the, the like poster swatch from Dharma versus looking at uh, my crude swatch videos, which if you haven't seen one of those before, 
a lot of times I like playing with dry dye powder uh, versus dealing with stock solutions and with the dyes in liquid form. So therefore, I will, a lot of times when I get a new dye, do a very crude swatch where I'll take a little bit of it, add it in the dry powder form onto the yarn and sort of get a feel for what happens and a feel for that tone. Because even pre-mixed pastels, like some of these colors that I have up here, uh, they might be more vibrant in powder form. They become more pastel when you mix at the uh, recommended, which I'm not sure for these if it would be a half percent depth of shade or lower to get a nice pastel. Uh, and depth of shade is the grams of dye powder per 100 grams of yarn. So a depth of shade of 0 0.5 would be a half gram on 100 grams of yarn. Uh, and the reason why dye manufacturers mix pastel dyes like this is that a, a red, for example, or a, like a primary blue, they are so potent for you to get that bright color that if you want to get something really pastel and more of a hint, you would need so little dye that it would be really, really hard to measure. And so you can make a dye stock and then dilute it more but instead they uh, have marketed these colors to make it a little bit easier to get more pastel shades but you can use them at higher like at a higher depth of shade to get a more vibrant color if you wanted which is something i do with like frozen blue all the time <laughs> um you're not prepared for your kitchen's mess so you're not dying along with me right now <laughs> understandable oh and other important things, uh, since I will be dealing with dry dye powder, I will be wearing a rough girdle mask, safety glasses, and gloves whenever the dry dye is open and I am using it. Uh, and also like my dog is put away, my kids are away. And so those are, um, I guess, precautions that I take. And all of the tools and equipment that I'm using are dedicated for dyeing yarn and are never used in the preparation of food. Uh, so those are things that are very important when you're dealing with commercial dyes. And I guess one other thing worth reminding people is acid dyes work for protein-based yarns. So I'm gonna be dyeing wool-based yarn today, but you could also use them on silk and alpaca and mohair and uh, angora, all kinds of um, hair type fibers, even though I guess for, I, you, you know what I mean. Uh, this won't work on synthetics, this dye type won't work on synthetics or on uh, plant-based fibers like cotton. So that I think is all of the info. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to say at the top. I don't know. I don't know. I just know that I am excited. Uh, because we are coming off of a winter vacation week. Uh, and so I am ready, <laughs> ready to get back to it. All right, let's see. Okay, see, I've, I'm reasonably set up today and I have my diary. Uh, so that way I can do like a little swatch photo and why the camera's not working. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, shoot. Nope, the camera is not working. Um, it is frozen. So let's... Uh, try this. Okay. There we go. Oh, shoot. Um, settings. Resolution won't let me shift it. No. Okay. Well, 
this will be zoomed in. Although, let's see if I can zoom back out. Sorry, I had it configured and now I've added it not at uh, the resolution, but pan and tilt. It's not gonna let me tilt. Oh, because I'm zoomed out. Um, so I can't tilt it. That's my oh, actually that's fine. It's not it's not really focusing. <laughs> um I'm zoomed out all the way. Like I can't I can barely read those labels. Um yeah, so the uh, the camera not working was more of a function of, uh, let me move this down. It was a function of just like, it had a still image. So I couldn't, I came over and I was like, wait, I don't see my hand. I don't see my, oh, shadow. Ugh, the lighting in here is not great. Okay. <laughs> Let's set these colors aside. I'm not going to swatch forest green or true black just because uh, that I, I want to look at these pinks. This is a four inch deep full size catering steam pan. And oh, you might want to know what yarn we're using today. I'm in a high twist kind of mood. So I pulled some Knit Picks Hawthorne and Knit Picks Twill. Hawthorne is 80% superwash fine Highland wool, 20% poly amid. It's two ply and just um, a nice high twist. Uh, and Twill is 100% superwash merino. And I don't know how many plies it is, but it's a very, so it's three ply. It's worsted weight. Um, and it's a very dense, like the plies, it's a very round sort of like high twist kind of yarn. The only problem with it is that it only has like a hundred and 149, even not even 150 yards per 100 grams. And so that is the downside of that yarn base. But I don't know. Thinking birds, the those yarn that yarn called to me. So let's do. Hmm. Yeah, let's play with the twill. Because, so I really like it. Um, I did accidentally uh, purchase a lot more of it than I thought that I ever would. Um, so I have a lot more of it than I might have otherwise planned for, uh, which is, I think is hilarious. Uh, and I think I intended to, or no, no, maybe I intended to, no, I intended to order this. One of the, either Twill or Muse, I ordered a 20 pack by mistake. Uh, Muse is also a gorgeous high twist base, but similarly, it's low yardage. Okay. Two, one, two. I'm going to add four cups of water that has two tablespoons of white vinegar in it. And I did not squeeze out that much water from the pre-soak. So we are um, low-ish. It's not even low immersion um, because you can just see there's like a lot of water in here. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited. And so I think so what there's six colors I'll probably try to do the powder down in like little bands and then I'm trying to think because I'll heat it yeah uh we'll see like once I take a picture of the colors here in the pan 
I'm undecided if I will heat it and take another picture before moving it all around and dyeing it. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. But I'm going to get suited up. And so these, I don't think I've updated the video descriptions to show my new safety glasses. I like these ones a lot more than my old ones. Uh, and then this is my respirator mask. It is a uh, P100. It's the, the one that you can buy from Dharma Trading Company. And they do have them back in stock. Um, there's a limit to how many like you can buy and how many filters. Oh, what did it do? I'm about to retire the old one. There's like a the the mask itself is fine, but part of the connections on the back of my head <laughs> are doing so well. Um, hello everyone. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, Pamela, this is live. So I haven't started yet. Or I mean, it's just starting. Okay. I'm a little annoyed. Not that gloves are more expensive, but I ordered my favorite gloves and, uh, <sighs> they sent another brand, so I'm disappointed. All right. Oh, I want a container. I want just something to stick the little spoons in after I use them. All right. I think I'm going to go for... Tangelo first because I think this is probably the most potent of the pinky colors. Oh my gosh, that's really potent. Um, so if I'm going to use this, I'm not going to use nearly this much. That's a lot. But this on camera, it looks very um, red. But this is feeling very, very spot on, especially a little more dilute for those feathers. Okay, I'm going to put those like there. So that actually is really, really good. I would not want to use this much. <laughs> um, it's a bit too intense in some of those areas. But... It is the hue that I want. So I just made it pretty dilute. So this is peach blush, which is also looking pretty pigmented to me. Oop, that was a lot. Yeah, the, this is looking just as pigmented. Whoa. <laughs> These are nearly identical. Um, we might see a difference. Uh, we might see a difference once we start heating it. But yeah, right here. Okay, I do see. I would say Tangelo has a hint more yellow to it. And it's more pigmented for sure. Uh, once it had time to sort of settle in. I am seeing more differences with the hues. Um, so I still think the Tangelo is sort of right on, right on the money for, for part of what I want. So Antique Mauve is a color I've used a handful of times. Yeah, so this, um, a hint of this could be good. It's sort of like a little bit like the legs. Um, but I'm curious, and of course this isn't really a spoon right now. But I think that this is probably the most blue. I'm going to pull in 
this spoon. I think this is going to be the most bluish, bluish pink of all of these colors. And so using this cold, uh, my pan is cold right now. Uh, the main thing is that this is letting me do, it's giving me a chance to feel how these colors might be a little more pastel because they haven't all struck. And so I can sort of spread it out and look at it. But again, the hues, shoot, uh, the hues could shift uh, before, the hues could shift before I, um, or once I add the heat. The peach blush definitely does look different. Let's see. Looks like candied cherries, it does. I was out of my Chemnitz paper towels. So next, let's do flamingo pink next because, well, ooh, that looks like it's fairly pigmented too. Um, all of these are less pigmented than, say, a fire red. Uh, you aren't going to ever get a pastel speckle if you're speckling with a color just because that's not really how it works. Um, the, the like particles of pigment are just as pigmented. Ooh, interesting. This is a color that I have a feeling. Um, huh. It's not looking like it's doing very much right now. It's a color that might. So, what was it? Poinsettia, Poinsettia, or maybe Chinese red. One of those really um shifted once it had it was exposed to heat and acid so it looked really like antique mauve at first um this the water is looking a little cloudy around it so i'm curious how it might look um in a few minutes once i apply heat so it might be a little too blue, but I might still want it to sort of bring in some of the blue to the picture, but it's not the flamingo um, from this particular flamingo. Uh, val or ballerina pink. This one is probably pretty pastel, um, which I'm gauging just looking at the powder. And so therefore I'm going a little heavier Okay, so this is sort of a, let's put that away, this is a very stereotypical Barbie-ish pink right here. Uh, as it goes into the pastel range, let's see, it gives a, so concentrated, it is too much. Um, so therefore, like this colorway is not one that would do really well with speckling because the powder itself is just too bright. But, uh, and I'm actually going to take some of this down here just to see. Yeah, pastel on its own. So more spread out and dilute. It's good. It's a little bright. Still, um, but it's it's got some good feeling. So I have a feeling. This is also sort of helping me decide what I want to do technique-wise. I have a feeling I'm going to mix some really, really crude stocks of some of these colors. 
Okay, and this one is Valentine Blush. I'm gonna die. Ooh, I might like this one. I think this one might be the winner. Ooh, I can actually even have these in the picture I'm about to take. That is really nice. Okay, I am gonna pull up the spoon again. So it is, I guess, Valentine Blush is a bluer pink, but I think it's nice because more concentrated, it doesn't feel electric. So it feels more natural, natural, uh, if that makes sense. I did have a feeling that I was going to go for a more liquid technique, and so that was the reason why I came to the counter. Okay. Oh, I need to take photos. Um. Okay. Oh. Let's see. Uh, phone and then oh no I pulled my pop socket off and then I will take it to the stove and then sit down and check the chat did I break my pop socket maybe maybe not I just put it on like I've never done this before okay Uh, and I'm checking the picture to see if I can read everything. Yes. So, what's funny, I guess I'll still write it down in my diary. Um, so, um, uh, ballerina. So that's antique mauve, then peach, blush, tangelo. Uh, flamingo, ballerina, and then Valentine. Valentine, peach, tangelo, and probably flamingo pink are. I think the ones that I am, and eh, maybe peach. Uh, this is hard. <laughs> I mean, I might make a stock of all four, the peach, the peach blush, the tangelo, the flamingo pink, and then the Valentine blush. But I think, and I'm making this bigger for my benefit. <laughs> uh, here we go. Nope, come on. So I know I'm blocking you a bit. Um, oh dear. Okay. So yeah, I like the Tangelo and then I think like really, really light, um, Flamingo and Valentine blush. Where is the peach? I think the peach is too red. I like the little bit more of the orange, uh, from the Tangelo. So, I'm now going to transport this to the stove and turn it on. Just on medium, low heat. Um, and I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes. Uh, to then like come and check in on it. Uh, and I can always move the camera over there at that point if needed. But yeah, let's um, chat 
Okay, maybe I'll open up my Prezi's. What? Oh, because I was like, why don't I see myself? And the integrated camera froze. <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> why? Why is everything freezing on me? Uh, configure video. Oh. Okay, it's working now. Um, that was weird. <laughs> I was like, it's frozen. Why am I frozen? Why does my, uh, <laughs> my setup hate me today? All right, let me see. Um, let's see. Yes, so the, that's one reason why I pulled the antique mob. It was very bird leg like to me, and so that's why I was like, ooh, maybe I'll want it. Um, but I figured I forgot how it looked when it was really pastel, and so therefore, um, like, I wasn't sure. Oh, you can't see my cursor. So, so if you look at the bird in the back, sort of like right up there, right in between its two legs that's a brighter pink so that's um really i could play with all of these pinks like i could play with all of them and it would really work um uh, so let's see so the chinese red that changed that's what i thought um why all of a sudden do you want barbie pink resist ties and over dye with a steely blue or true black yes yes please do and submit it that that counts so like i said for the dialogue you you know, someone doesn't have to be able to look at the yarn and be like oh my gosh that's that photo but it's about what does the photo inspire you to create um and you can be as literal or as sort of like just broad <laughs> as you want to it um let's see hello yay yeah it's trying dying it's fun um hello everyone so this is the inspiration. Yes, it's the flamingo. Um, oh, Christine, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you. And I like the little unicorn. I, I am also itching to uh, dye some rainbows at some point. Uh, and so, okay, let's, let's open up these, these prezzies that I got myself. Um, so I received a few received. Uh, I put a bunch of things from Bird Parker on my list. So Keith got me... A bunch of stuff from her shop uh, so she does like jewelry and um, sort of like notions kinds of stuff uh, but it's 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 gorgeous and so I don't want to show the address but oh oh but like the packaging is always so cute so cute and Oh, this one came in. She's, she gives these like, this is like when my earrings came in, a little metal um, package. And then I'll show that in a moment. And then, I think this is just my packing slip. Okay, so. Um, some people might be dying along now. Okay, so let's see. So in the little metal container, Oh, these are smaller than I expected, but that's great. So I got these little stitch markers and I chose, I have a lot of progress keepers that are on rings or that are on like bulb pins or lobster claws. And so I thought it would be fun to get some that are on rings. And so look at these and they, they're like these beautiful, it's a rainbow of hearts, but they have, it's like, it's like they're shiny and sort of carved into them are these little knit stitches uh and so i just thought you could there you can really see it's like a mirror effect on the back you can really see that with the yellow i'm going to go turn the stove down uh <laughs> yeah, so these, I just, I saw them ages ago, and I think, 
on like my, so I collect like business cards and stuff and I give it to Keith throughout the year. And so, um, but these were something that I was just like, they're so fun. These are adorable and a really lightweight. They won't weigh down your project. And the rings are big enough. Um, so it's just, it's a large jump ring versus being like a, sometimes people use the, um, like a key ring kind of thing. I don't know what you call that. So those, those are very cute. Um, and so then the other thing that I got was the collaboration with Gigi Made It for February. And so you can see um, there is, oh dear, I totally messed, them, messed up the pretty presentation. I'm going to flip these back around. So Gigi is our orange queen. And so they're all orange. Uh, and so there's orange glitter hearts. There is the stand in the gap right there with the mirror. Uh, there is hashtag on purpose. Uh, Gigi's logo, which is there. There's Gigi. And the other one is an orange skein that says glow. And so th these are still available um, and she's donating uh, money to the conscious kid uh, based on sales of these. And so it was, you know, a, a fun collaboration and I just wanted to help support it. Uh, and so they, um, Bertie Parker and Gigi have teamed up in the past for that, um, uh, for some other like, like uh, collaborations with uh, contributions to charitable causes. And so, uh, yeah, Gigi, uh, oh, she has just like, and she actually uh, watching like some of her stuff made me start to feel more comfortable being in front of the camera versus always behind. Um, and so that's something that like, I credit, I credit to you with. Um, so that is Birdie Parker Designs. And I will grab her website and drop it in the chat. I think it's just birdieparker.com. Um, and so I have, just drop it in the chat. I've got some other stuff. I've got a, um, some earrings. Are they down here? <laughs> they might be in over here. Uh-oh, I don't know where my earrings are. Oh, they are right here. I had a bunch of my presents in a uh, bag. All right, with heat, I'm not seeing significant shifts in any of the colors, um, but there's still time on the timer. Um, so I had all this in just like a, a project bag, but these earrings are so fun. Keith got me these for Christmas. And then for my birthday, he got me this leather bracelet that is like knit in pearl with little hearts. And so you can like wrap it around twice. I'm not gonna put it on now because I don't want to get it like wet. But actually I've been using it also just as a shawl cup to like when I wrap it around so it doesn't slip off. I've just been using it to sort of hold things uh, together. And I really like that because it, it's secure because it snaps. So yeah, her stuff is just like super, super adorable. Um, and I believe she's doing like new stitch markers every month and stuff. Uh, so that is fun. Oh, there goes the timer. Okay. Uh, I will open up my other box in a moment. Let me, okay, the audio could go funky. Um, all right, let me try this. Oh, wait.
I need to make sure, okay, that's working. I need to make sure I can see. Okay, the audio is back, <laughs> but the video is not. Oh my gosh, this is so annoying. Um, I don't know why it keeps going on me. Oh, there we go. Okay, it's working. <laughs> um, do they come in the tin? Uh, the, so I'm not sure what products come with the tin from Bertie Parker and what don't. So I will say that my earrings came in a tin, the heart stitch markers came in a tin, and the, um, that bracelet, that leather bracelet came in a tin. The, um, Gigi made it collaboration did not come in a tin but I have a feeling that because of the like charity and the big collaboration that it's possible that there's more let me shift this down it's possible that there's a lot more of those uh being made and so that's why those oops those weren't in a tin oh my gosh I am not there we go yes this is live yeah oh haha -ha, my my light is working again <laughs> yeah so i am liking the what was it the tangelo i do like the peach blush um pastel uh, and then I do like flamingo. I mean, the, the peach blush is a little too much, but we'll see. We'll make some stocks. Although now I'm terrified to try to move the camera back to the counter. We'll try. <laughs> um, and then I like uh, Valentine blush. So I'm going to put away, actually, I'll grab a photo of it here. <laughs> Just so I have it. And let's go ahead and flip it. Because I'm curious, we'll probably get some spread. I'm curious about the color penetration uh, that we have in here. Because I might add, actually, part of me wants to add a little more, but part of me also wants to not. Ooh, one of these has some like golden breaking. All right, friends at home, should I leave this yarn the way it is uh, and but we'll add some more water and heat set it. I'll probably transition it to the other burner um, or should I add more color to this one? Uh, and so let me know what you think down in the chat. Um, so Carol said that you, um, you're cutting the Dharma poster and putting up the lids. Um, <laughs> yes, I found, I found that that is so, so useful. Um, that was a, um, little bean loves yarn. Who was actually someone I have a common friend with, but speaking of a different bean. So I will be dyeing more yarn. So the more color versus leave it as it is, is just for this particular iteration. Um, because I have a tendency to go really, really big, but, oh man, 
All right, so this is what I got myself. I got myself a, uh, I'll make myself big to show this. I've been waiting to open this. Um, so I got a Lola Bean Yarn Co. Uh, enamel pin, which is super cute. Um, super, super cute. Uh, she, uh, so uh, Adela is like uh, awesome. And she, on one of her Instagram lives, was talking about the development of um, some uh, of this colorway. And so this was a, what is it, sort of like a, it's not Hero and Villains, I forget exactly what they called it, or Good versus Evil. Oh, that was Heroes and Villains. Okay. So um, there's, this is a Princess and the Frog. Uh, collaboration. So Ken Yarn, um, he dyed this, uh, what is this? This is the Tatiana, or sorry, Princess Tiana. Um, princess Tiana. So this is our our princess who then became the frog. But this has, this is really pretty. It's got um, sort of like apple green and then bluer greens and um, some brown speckles. It's very pretty. And then uh, this is the Dr. Facilier. Oh my gosh. And so, yeah, when, when Adela was talking about what went into developing the colorway uh, and sort of just the, the iterations and what she, her color inspiration and photo, and then how it, she did multiple things and it wasn't quite working. And then this is where uh, she ended up. And so, yeah, it just sort of resonated and spoke to me. And so I, um, I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet. I felt like I needed more yarn, but um, she's also been just an, someone who, as an artist, has really inspired me. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, and I think it sold out in like 12 minutes. I also, like, there's been other yarn she's dyed that I've wanted. Um, and uh, this is not as pretty as it was when she had twisted it. Oh man, like her twist, look at how tiny the label is. I can't get it quite like that. Um, oh, it's so, so pretty. So I just, I enjoyed the story behind it. And I was just thinking, I was like, you know what? I'm not going, I mean, there's so much gorgeous, gorgeous yarn everywhere. And I have not bought myself for my personal stash new yarn in a really long time. And so this, I was able to support two different indie dyers at the same time. And so uh, that was just really, really nice. Um, really nice. Um, cute. I, <laughs> yeah, so I'm, all right. I, I'm gonna leave, I think, the swatch yarn as it is. And I'm gonna go put my Prezi's far away from where the dye is. So that way, oh yeah. <laughs> Ah, so that way I don't still die on it. Oh, ha! hi everyone. Sorry. Uh, let me turn the camera off. Okay. Uh, I, I always smell yarn and fiber. I am. Okay, let's see. It is working. I want to move to the counter. So if <laughs> we lose video or audio, <laughs> I will fix it. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh dear. Why there we go. Yay! Yay! It worked. That one went seamlessly. Okay, which colors did I say I was putting away? I'm gonna put away antique mauve and ballerina pink. I'm gonna put those away. So now I have to decide how I want to do this. And I'm going back and forth. I thought I was going to make stock solutions, but I actually think I'm going to do something different. 
I think I'm going to use the dry powders and sort of paint with them cold here on the counter and layer and shift and try to dilute and spread to my heart's content. So I think that's what I want to do. We'll see how it goes, but that allows me to work over here too. And I have another pan. Oh, what I'm going to do for the yarn that's heat setting, I added two more tablespoons of vinegar and I'm going to add another four cups of water and heat it for a bit. Maybe it'll be more than four cups of water. Yeah, about four cups of water. And that's just so the, the fibers can float a little bit in the pan. I should have done that before I moved y'all, but uh, that is what it is. Oh, thank you. Thanks for saying I inspire you. I mean, I don't consider myself a pro. I consider myself a student. <laughs> and so, oh man, I think what did Adela said she does like, she can do like hundreds of skeins in a day. And I'm like, I do 12 in a day. I think the, with Valentine's Day, I did in one day 24. And I think that's the most I've done in one day ever. <laughs> uh, certainly, I feel like that's the most I've done because I pre dyed a lot. Um, I feel like that's the most I've done in a color way. Uh, all right, don't forget to leave questions. I don't know why I put the respirator on already, but that's what I did. Okay. All right, and I'm gonna do something I don't often do. I'm gonna have 400 grams of yarn in the pan. I feel like I'm living super dangerously right now. <laughs> normally, normally I dye 300 grams, uh, sometimes two or 100, but 400 in a pan is not my usual. So as I'm laying these out in the pan, the skein, if this is the circle on the pan, so I'm putting it on its side. So one side is on top of the other and sort of spreading it out like this. Because this will really give me access to just one side of the yarn at a time. But uh, but all, more of the whole skein, because it's on its side. Uh, you could end up with something a little more asymmetric, but yeah, okay. All right, and now I need to add water. Okay, and acid. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Um, Does anyone else's nose itch horribly as soon as they put on a mask? Which I have it on and I don't have the powders open yet. So I'm like, I may as well take it back off. <laughs> but I still have my safety glasses on. All right. Uh, so I have 400 grams of yarn in here. In my thing here, I've added four tablespoons of vinegar and eight cups of water. And I'm not sure... I might add all of it. I probably will add all of it because 400 grams of yarn is a lot. Okay, and so we are low immersion, but I'm my plan, we'll see how this goes, is to speckle on the dry powder and then 
with gloves, like work it through and massage it through. And I'm gonna prep more water because at some point I'm gonna add more water so things can travel through the yarn and we'll just see how it goes. All right, I've got on hand, not next to the computer, two cups of water, sorry, no, four cups of water with two tablespoons of white vinegar. And I have the little bit from rinsing off those spoons from before. So let me see. Hello, everyone. Oh, it's really late in France, too. Y'all are staying up way later than me. <laughs> I can't believe my kids are quiet. I'm putting the respirator on now. Because uh, I've started... A lot of times I try to start these streams a little later. But... Yeah, alright. Let me see. Uh, okay, I think... What I want to do, and of course I have that flipped over. Um, let's start. Now I want my hands to be completely dry when I go into the dye containers. Uh, and oh no, that's not the direction I wanted to go. I'm gonna go this way. Um, okay. I want my hands to be dyed because it's dry because I don't want to introduce uh, color into who's you wear. And I want to introduce moisture into the jar. So I'm coming in with what? This is that Valentine blush. And it might look like I'm speckling, but that is not my overall intent. The intent is to just spread the color out over the yarn. And then as I said, I'm coming in to massage it through. Now, since there's a fair amount of acid here, we will probably get some speckles. In fact, I am seeing in areas, there's some spots where like it has already set, um, and that is okay. Uh, I think that if I wanted to be able to move things through more, I should have started with less acid. Um, so I think, hmm, I'll have to think about how to do this so that way I can keep my hands dry and go in and out of the dye containers. But I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited. And the thing about this is that we want, in some places, just a breath of pink. Just a hint of pink is sort of what we want. And it's okay. I always stress about leaving white behind. Um, but today, that's okay. This is some flamingo pink. Now, I won't be disappointed if we end up with um sorry i will not be disappointed if i end up with no white <laughs> uh i love to have color sort of layer and spread through so i'm not using very much dye at all Ooh, yes light and soft that flamingo pink is almost disappearing. Um, so whereas the ballerina pink gave us almost, or sorry, the Valentine blush in some areas gave us some brightness, the flamingo pink is almost gray. <laughs> Except it's not gray, but it's comparatively, it is less bright. It is a more muted, dusty, pink and so I want to add more of it and I don't have a yarn mop 
because, well, the yarn mop is here. So I'm going a little heavier this time, but I'm making an effort to spread out the dye as much as I can because I don't want, you can see where I've added it to the yarn and it feels really dark. That's not what I want. I want it to have this more wash. And I'm actually like in love with this on its own. Now, there's not color on the other side. There's not a lot of color inside the skein. So things are gonna need to be moved around. But I have a huge, huge feeling that uh, a lot of this color is striking because it's not moving when I first help it dissolve and then it's staying kind of put, which is going to allow me to play with this cold in a way I might not otherwise have been able to do. Okay, now is the time that I really need to be light. And I really hope I'm not going to regret this. The Tangelo. Ooh. I'm going really slow. I'm actually really enjoying this effect of it spreading out. Ooh, I'm really enjoying it. It's making me feel like feathers. It feels very salmon. Um, and so I'm going to try to zoom in. This time I'm not wiping, oh, look at that color. I'm not wiping my hands on the yarn. I'm actually going to let this sit and we'll see what it does cold. I am obsessed. I don't play with pink a lot. So I just wash off my gloves. I'll put these back on in a moment. Oh man. I'm loving this. I think that if there's time, I'll do a color also with like maybe the green and black, but this, I'm sticking with these three colors. I love this. This is not like anything I've ever really done before. Okay, let me see if I can zoom in. Because hopefully, hopefully it did not, um, <laughs> hopefully it didn't, um, Stop working on me. Camera control, like zoom right in. It's a good sign that I see it doing that, but oh, where's my mouse? <laughs> I, am, I have a mouse on the floor. There we go. And tilt. I don't know why it's grainy. It shouldn't be grainy. But the if this were hot, there would still maybe be some spread from these speckles. Uh, if, if I would have less water, there wouldn't be as much spread. But this feels so feather-like. This feels so much like the feathers, uh, nope, you, there we go, on the back of the bird, um, which I'm pointing with my mouse, which you can't see. So, <laughs> aha, that worked. Work. Um, cancel. Oh, Blue Serpent, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you. I think I set the timer. 
uh, I can never really tell. Um, and oh my gosh, I've got like marks from the mask on my face. All right, I'll be down here right now. Um, so don't flip it. Um, the reason why I will be flipping this, and so I'm hoping that by waiting a minute that like I won't lose the pops of pink. I haven't tried doing something like this cold. But the reason that I will be flipping it and adding more color is that these colors are striking fast enough and are pastel enough that they are not penetrating through uh, all the layers of the yarn in the pot. And so it could be fun with like just half of the skein to still be white or with little color, but I want the like one section to have more in it. Um, When can we have another watch party like we did during Hanukkah? Those were fun. Those are a lot of fun. Um, I'm not sure because it doesn't really work for me to do watch parties when regular videos come out at 8.30 a.m. Because either uh, I'm usually awake, which is why I have that time, but often like the kids are just getting to school or something like that. Uh, so it's not a convenient time for me to hang out in the chat room. But... I hope that when I do uh, the summer mini skein mini series this year, I hope to be able to do maybe not all of the nights, but a lot of the nights uh, do live premieres. And maybe I'll try to occasionally do a random video where I can hang out and have a live chat because I do really enjoy that myself. I find it a lot of fun uh, because I love the, the chance to get to like just respond in the chat room and react to my own videos. I find it really, really fun. I think that this year I was able to do premieres and be in the chat room every night of Hanukkah, which was so fun. Uh, but uh, it was also possible because there were no like holiday parties and there was nowhere to be <laughs> and nowhere I, for to go. So I had no other commitments. And I imagine that this summer, I mean, I, I can't predict this summer. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know, like, <laughs> I don't think we're going to be traveling anywhere, but, uh, yeah, so it, I, yeah, I have no idea, uh, if I'll have family obligations or what. Um, so, uh, I don't want to commit to doing every single night. I'll know more once I get ready to announce that. Um, but certainly, uh, some of the nights I would, but yeah, I think, so I've started dying already for this summer mini skin mini series and I'm going to structure it very much like I did last year in that uh, you when I and I'm, I haven't figured out when I don't know when I'm going to open pre-orders so I don't have an announcement for that or anything yet. Um, hold on. Yeah, so there's no official announcement on pre-orders for the Summer Mini Skein miniseries yet. But I do plan, um, rather than it being a sampler like Hanukkah where you get a mini to open each night, there will be a set of five, I don't think I'm going to be doing any ten, or ten, there will be a set of 100 grams that will be made up of most likely five, potentially five, or potentially up to ten mini skeins that go together and are intended to be used together in some kind of project. And so um, one of the reasons why I'm sort of, I'm doing a lot of the techniques that I had originally wanted to do last summer, but then I simplified it because I was overwhelmed with the realities of the pandemic. Uh, but yeah, so I'm, there's a lot of techniques that say I do for Hanukkah sometimes and things that I'm like, ooh, this created a gorgeous fade set, but then I have to break it up <laughs> for the samplers. And so this gives me a chance to play with some techniques uh, and to intentionally create some kinds of fades and explore and try and challenge myself. Um, and I'm going to be using a lot of different yarn bases. I think so far I've used, maybe I've only used three so far in the couple of videos I've filmed, but I'll be comparing a lot of bases to each other and stuff too. And so I think that it should be a lot of fun. So, 
Uh, yeah, but there's no uh, pre-order announcement yet uh, because I also do, never open up pre-orders uh, sooner than 90 days before I plan to ship the yarn. So, uh, which is mainly because Etsy won't let you make a shipping label at 91 days after someone's made a purchase. Uh, Oh yay! I'm glad. Let's see. Oh, I'm I'm I have a lot of fun. Uh, so this one is very pale. Um, this flamingo or this yarn? Because um, there's like the color will probably be pretty pale. And watch a lot of times I'm like, oh, I should have gone further. I'm trying to have a little bit of restraint. Part of me wants to add green and black speckles to this, but I'm not going to, because I like. The, the interplay of these pink tones. But I am now going to get up and try to uh, move it around. Okay, and since I'm up there, Flamingo, you can go down here. <laughs> I keep moving it around. It's like, oh, of course, right now it's so small that I can barely see it <laughs> as my reference. Um, but let me get suited back up. Oh, here we are. Safety equipment is important. Okay. My face is itching. All right. Ooh, this is so cool looking, these speckles. All right, there's a bit of some color in here. But if I'm moving it, these are soft speckles that are here to stay. Um, so there's enough acid that uh, it works. And so I'll show you now what I was talking about. If we look at the back of those layers I just did, I'm okay with there being white today. So I'm not going to be trying to uh, cover up all of the white. But I imagine that I will be doing at least, uh, <laughs> at least after this, so this is flip one, I imagine I will be doing at least two more flips, potentially more, because again, I usually have less yarn in the pan, but so moving it out, then there's just, there's some resist just based on how the yarn is laid out in the pan, and ugh, it is so, so fun. So as I'm doing this, I'm trying to like separate and like move the yarn around a little bit, but it's really nice <laughs> when I'm like, okay, I'm okay with there being some, um, some white left in the yarn. Uh, let me see. So what do you think would happen if I use hot water? I think the colors would strike faster. Um, so by doing this, and they're still striking pretty quickly, but it's allowing me to, especially with these pastels, with this Valentine and Flamingo pink, it's giving me a chance to, to spread them a bit. And so if I had done this with, there we go, if I had been doing this with uh, hot water, it probably would be, and there are still speckles already. They're soft because I'm moving the colors around, uh, but this is, a, this is different for me. And I like to push myself and try new things. And I wanted a softness with this colorway. Uh, but <laughs> if you go back and watch, if you just tuned in it from the beginning of the live stream, I thought I was going to go and do, um, this is the flamingo pink now. I thought I was going to go through and, and uh, mix some like, liquid dyes to then use. 
and here I am falling in love with just the uh, powders. So the Flamingo Pink spreads really, really well. I'm curious if I, when I add heat, if it will sort of bloom a bit. And by bloom, I mean, if we'll see that heat, that those colors take like more saturation and intensity, but I don't think so. I need to get some rags that I can wash so I can dry my hands and not depend on paper towels. Okay, so now I'm going to get the Tangelo. And this color is a lot more pigmented. I'm picking just a tiny bit. And I'm rubbing my fingers together ever so slightly. Just letting a tiny bit fall out at a time. So for me, when I speckle, I often go heavy. So having this kind of, and I feel like even this was a little heavy compared to what I did on the other side, but I just took a little tiny, tiny amount. Um, and I'm not rubbing my hands on the yarn because you can see how much pigment there is. This is the one circumstance where I could have used a yarn mop tonight. <laughs> I am washing the gloves because gloves are a lot more expensive right now as they, I mean, this makes sense, but yeah, this, uh, this technique, this colorway is just so different for me. So different from what I usually do. Which is honestly a really funny thing for me to say. I just said timer for five minutes again. It's funny to, for me to say that because, like, I do different things all the time. That's sort of <laughs> my thing. <laughs> That's what I do. I love to try new things. But doing tone on tone is not something I've done a lot. But also doing something... Yeah, I mean, I, I tend, I think that if I'm left to my own devices and I'm not trying to do something specific, I probably go for really saturated colors. And I honestly, and we might do this towards the end. I'm going to pop my face up. Uh, we might do this towards, towards the end. We'll see how long I keep going today. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, then I might bring in the like the black and the green that I wanted to, but uh, yeah, I was like, ooh, I could layer these colors, but I was afraid it would become so too too dark, like that the it might or turn too purple with the addition of the black. So I'm really really excited. Um, yes. So the dyes. Um, so. I mean, I guess Victoria it might be a uh, a language, because uh, uh, I think you're you're French, if I remember correctly. Um, but so the dyes would dissolve faster in hot water, and so they would, um, but so they would strike the yarn faster is the the main reason. And also, I was curious about just doing speckles like this while cold, because I. It's funny, like Keith and I were were talking like long term like plans and dreams, and I'd love someday to have a dedicated studio space, uh, whether it's on our property, which I mean we'd have to build an addition uh, to our house. So I mean that's not you know, or it might mean that we'd have to move or whether I find a place to rent that would, I would, could convert to a studio. That is something that is absolutely a dream of mine because 
uh, to some extent, I'm limited to how many skeins of yarn I could dye in a day um, based on what I have available uh, to me. And so I think that one of the things I'm enjoying exploring are what techniques, like this technique I'm doing right now with like adding the dye and waiting five minutes in between, this isn't something that would be easy for me to scale up unless I had a huge table with many pans. And so then by the time like I cycled around and got back to the first one, then it was ready to flip and do the next. So something like that would be possible, but I don't have the capacity to heat multiple pans like this. And so when the summer comes, I want to try, and I'm blanking on who did it. I referenced a dyer in my first, uh, the first time I tried like a cool vat kind of technique, but I'd want to try hand painting the yarn, letting it sit, for 24 hours and then steam setting it to just see if that helps just capacity things. And so, because I think that that's something that for people with limited space and resources, it's, a, it's interesting to me, uh, both for my own color explorations and just in general. So, I mean, I don't have plans to buy like warming tables or a proofing oven, but like, 10 years down the line, it would be pretty cool to have some of that kind of stuff. Uh, I mean, you know, so yeah. <laughs> you guys see flamingos in person last year? Yeah, the, the flamingos that we have at our local zoos, I don't think they get as much shrimp, so they're not quite as bright as this one, but yeah. So anyway, um, the yeah, those are all thoughts. But so something, if you had a proofing oven, I would imagine that a lot of the techniques and stuff you do, I, I mean, you might have like a kettle and do stuff warm on a countertop before putting it into heat. So there's ways you could introduce heat into the situation on a counter versus being on the stove. But it's just interesting to consider um, different things that I could do so then I could attempt um, to do more than like yeah so I, I could try to do more um, so you ever have too much yarn mm. <laughs> you guys always see my house. <laughs> oh my gosh I don't have too much yarn um as I struggle to get up. Oh my goodness. Um, I don't have too much yarn, but I certainly have yarn like off just off camera. There are boxes and boxes of yarn that have not made it into my little studio. The problem with my house, <laughs> the problem with my house is that the my studio, which is like, it's more of a large closet slash hallway. So it's technically a room, but it's a walkthrough. Um, to go upstairs. Uh, so we don't have a basement. We have a third floor, like a finished attic instead. Uh, and so this walkthrough room, you need to go through to get up to the third floor. And it's not a large room, but it's just full of yarn, absolutely full. And at one point I got new shelves and then decided to make a pretty backdrop. <laughs> oh man, which I don't use that much. Uh, and the reason why is mainly because it's upstairs and I have the camera set up downstairs to go up and down with lights and the camera and everything is just, it can be a lot. <laughs> so if I plan things well, then I go up and I do many things at once. All right. So for flip three, I'm going inside out. And this actually is not bad um not bad at all like i'm not feeling a need to add a ton of color but see here on these more interior skeins that's where i have a feeling i might want some more and i think of the pangelo with this next round and then the last round i'm going to want very little um, because some of that, because 
purely for the fact that it is a more pigmented color, uh, some of that you can see has gone through. But it's nice to not, I guess, so leave it yeah, like that. Um, it's really nice to not worry about leaving white behind because having like white and pastel pinks is part of the colorway that I'm going for here. Uh, so uh, thank you guys for joining me live. Like I love doing this and oh goody. <laughs> I just hit 10,000 steps. <laughs> um, I was doing a lot of work with the uh, cricket today, and so I was not moving that much. Let's see. Okay, this is the one I need to go fastest on. This is Valentine Blush. Oh, that was a big, big bit. Like, I'm actually fairly satisfied with the color. Like, at first when I flipped it, I was like, oh, that's a lot of white. But now looking at it, I'm like, oh, that's actually not, that's pretty pink still. So the fun thing about this is the more you flip and add colors, and add these dyes and move it through, the more these colors are layering together. And so that adds more depth and dimension. Whereas, and I'm excited to show this in the recap, the first yarn that we dyed, I didn't flip at all. I mean, I flipped it and we looked at it, but I didn't add more color. Uh -oh. <sighs> all right. Flamingo. Flamingo pink. Whoop. This one I can go a little heavier with because it's not that dark. Pink. A little attention by the ties. But again, this is pretty darn good. Pretty good. and just softening and moving it through and also by pressing this does help distribute some color through the layers i love this so much oh my goodness i you know, it's, it's funny because it's not a very me colorway in the sense that this isn't one that I'd go into the booth and purchase necessarily, even though I might think, ooh, that's really pretty. Uh, but I'm really excited and I want to explore this general technique more. Okay, we've got that really really soft barely oh no that was a lot move the fingers Wahahoo. And so this is the point where if this was a like a Chemnitz video, this is the part where I time lapse. <laughs> now these new gloves like don't they don't fit me as well. But I will say they're easier to put on and take off uh, and reuse. So like right there, 
It's a little heavier than I wanted. But not bad. Oh, and you know how I have a microwave light today? I don't know how that started working again. Our microwave is broken. We need to replace it. Like the handle popped off. We can still open it, but the handle doesn't work. And the reason why we haven't replaced it is because of, oh good, that's still working. It's just because of COVID, because we'd have to get someone in to install it. And since, uh, since we can deal without it, we haven't done it. That and the uh, garbage disposal. Like, my house is just falling apart. Um, love how I laugh first. <laughs> oh, I laugh a lot. Uh, sometimes I cut out the parts where I laugh, but a lot of times I leave it in because I don't know. It's just me and true and real. I am in love with this. <laughs> I am so proud of this. I am so happy. Uh, I do get questions sometimes from people who are like, oh, why don't you use like a dusting wand or a salt shaker to speckle? And I like the tactile feel of having the dye and pinching it and having control over how fast I'm adding it or how slow. And when, with that pink jello, I picked up just a tiny amount and I was barely moving my fingers and but I was moving it faster around to sort of spread it out uh, whereas with a shaker you give like a little too hard of a shake and you can get a lot more so if I wanted to get finer speckles and spread say that tangelo out a little further I would have diluted it with citric acid first because then it's a lot easier uh, if you're too heavy-handed um, you could still get speckles because they'll spread out. So if you add just a tiny bit of tangelo to a lot of citric acid powder, that's an easy way to help if you're heavy handed. Um, so um, there's preference. Uh, oh, good. I'm glad. Yeah, a lot of times I do daytime shows just because uh, I'm more of a morning person than an evening person sometimes. But I know that for a lot of people logistically, uh, it is easier for uh, people to attend an evening, an evening stream. And and really, my question, um, a great question. What is my PhD in? Uh, my PhD is in biochemistry and molecular pharmacology, and my dissertation was looking at the biosynthesis of uh, nitrogen phosphorus bonds and uh, specifically I was looking at some natural products and the enzymes that would create that had some really really cool chemistry uh, so that's what I did and what's funny about this is that uh, one way that we would identify natural products that were interesting to explore and so some things a lot of times they, these would be antibiotic based because microbes have lots the warfare in the microbiomes is intense for resources and so they make different things to uh, defeat <laughs> other microorganisms and uh, but a lot of times a lot of compounds people will isolate that have like antibacterial properties or antimicrobial properties of some kind a lot of times people will pick something that has color because it's then easy to extract and isolate. And so uh, it's fun when I'm doing natural dyeing and like, I'm not isolating or purifying any pigments, but there's like an extraction, which I'm like, this is going back to like some of our collaborators. <laughs> but um, colleagues of mine, you know, you go and you get it. I never went and did a collection trip with, to collect dirt samples and to try to identify interesting strains or anything like that, but uh, yeah. <laughs> um, you'd, you'd have a really hard time not putting black on this. It's, I'm, I, I went back and forth, but I was like, I like where it is in this stage so much. And this is so different from, I think things that I've done with regard to pinks and these peachy pink tones that I'm afraid to uh, 
go too far. Because <laughs> one thing that I'm really happy with right now is that these speckles that I'm adding, which are large speckles, um, but I'm not going very heavy with them. And a lot of times, oh, sorry, I, I have no problem tuning out the beeper. Um, I tend to go so heavy when I do speckles that, uh, and not just like, I mean, some of them leave no day behind. So when I do speckles and move and get like a really, really heavy speckle, but even when I'm other things, I tend to get really, really heavy with it. And so uh, I've been feeling if I add a little bit of plaque, I'd be like, well, the balance, I need more. And yeah. <laughs> Um, but with a shaker, doesn't it run the risk of having powder all over the place? Yeah. Um, so the only times I've tried a shaker are with um, Kool-Aid. I tried that with Kool-Aid at first. And that's when I realized, like, if you wanted things more spread out, you would have to go higher up. But then you risk, like, spreading things out too far, you know? Uh, but... I can also see how if you were dyeing a ton of yarn, having some dye in some kind of shaker would potentially lead to less spills. So if you have like, yeah, I guess it depends on where, what your workspace is like. So yeah, it's like, I mean, I have pulled, I have a uh, forest green and true black up there. Um, I think that goodness. I still have two more skeins of yarn that are pre-soaking. I'm probably going to flip and dye this one more time before I add more yarn. And then maybe, we'll see, maybe I will just do something like random and heavy and fast in the, um, in the other pan that is warm. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it was really fun. Actually, um, some of the research I did from undergrad uh, just got published. And um, I'm not on the paper. I'm in the acknowledgments. But um, I, which, like, it wouldn't, <laughs> I did the research almost 15 years, like 15 years ago. So my contribution was a small part to a big puzzle. Uh, I, went, I went to Wellesley, and so the research is done by undergrads, which means there's like a long list of people on any given project. Um, but uh, I haven't read the paper yet, but my um, old advisor who is now retired, the paper just was finally, uh, finally came out. And so it was just fun to see data from things I synthesized and stuff in, uh, in this paper. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so far removed from that project, uh, but yeah, um, I, I'm excited that, that that just came out. Oh, thanks, but I really want to cut it. I haven't had a haircut since, um, I think, maybe October 2019. And I am just, I'm not, at this point, I almost have enough that I could cut it to the length where I want to cut it and then have enough to donate, um, depend, although there's some layers, so I'm not entirely sure. So at this point, either cases can go, if cases go as low as they were last July, then I'll go get my hair cut. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll wait until, like, I have enough to donate. Um, But uh, yeah, it's it's different. <laughs> it grew out well, so um, the the stage where I don't like, and oh, I should get back to the yarn. The stage where I don't like it is when like my hair is like just, like I like it a little above my shoulders, but then when it gets just below, then it annoys me. Now it's long enough that, yeah, I I, I don't think it was even this long for my wedding. <laughs> uh. Yeah, but all right, I'm going to stand up. Do, do, do. All right. Oh, I feel like I'm getting back into the swing of things. This year has um, <laughs> been challenging. 
And yes, by this year, I mean just 2021. Oh. But at least we're all healthy. So that is good. <sighs> okay. All right, this is this is pretty good. I'm only I think I only need like a little bit. So with this final flip, I'm looking for areas that and again I'm okay with there being some white behind, but I'm checking for large areas that don't have as much color and sometimes around the ties might need some more but this technique is so random that unquestionably there are going to be um differences between all of these skeins okay so that one has had a bunch of dye so that one doesn't need a ton more I think I'm therefore going to focus. Oh, I picked up a little more than I think I needed. I'm not going to do a lot more of this. I'm so curious what this is going to look like dry. But I love how we've got this blush pink in here. And oh, I didn't, did I? Okay, but I can't see the chat, so I didn't flip it. Um, it's going a little heavy with the flamingo pink. <laughs> okay, but it's also because this color is pretty pastel. And spreads out easily. And so this is, these are the things that, that you learn as you're playing with the color. And so I don't think I'm going to necessarily remember, oh, okay, uh, Valentine blush does this, and the flamingo pink does this. But the more you play with different colors, the better feel you get for it. Okay. Now... Okay, there's the occasional bigger bloom. Think feathers. Think feathers. Okay. And that, my friends, is my flamingo. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do now. Um, I'm going to let this sit for five minutes before we start heating it. Uh, but I am, let's see how we did. Cool, the dye is just in there. So I'm going to carefully move it to the stove. And meanwhile, I'm going to come over with an old friend. Uh, I turned off the heat a while ago. Oh, 
and it is not that hot anymore. Okay, and this is our, these were our crude swatches that we did at the beginning. Ooh, what color was that? I'm, there's a chance I'll be able to match them up dry uh, because we did not, um, that one's gave really pretty speckles. That might be the Valentine blush. Uh, <sighs> because we did not, um, after I flipped it, we didn't add any more color. Okay. Let's. All right. I'm going to set a timer. I'm going to sit and chat because I couldn't read the chat. And then we will, uh, I think we're going to dye a little more yarn. We, I've got two more skeins pre-soaked. And I'll try to move the camera <laughs> and we'll see how that does. Um, thank you, Christine. Uh, yes, mine, I, it's, it's so funny. I didn't realize because I haven't had my hair this long in years, how much lighter my hair gets from the sun and how much brighter red until at one point I braided it and I looked and I was like, oh my gosh, the under layers of my hair are really dark um but what i a, par, a big part of it also though i think is this summer with wearing masks whenever like we spend a lot of time outside in the yard but i did a lot of walks around the neighborhood and i was wearing um tie behind the back of the head masks a lot so therefore my hair wasn't moving as much as it might just because like i play with it and stuff and so the, the like differences were real <laughs> extreme. And so I braided it once and I was like, whoa, I've got streaks. <laughs> um, oh man, but yeah, uh, this is this is really, really fun. Um, I am excited with this one. I try sometimes uh, to pick inspiration photos that vary. I try to pick things that, um, like last month I played with light and dark when we did the sparklers. Um, or sometimes I have, you know, I play with things that are like very like in my wheelhouse or Rebecca. I don't remember what October's was. November was the super, super saturated mystical forest. Now I don't remember. Um, now I don't remember. I have to go back and look on Instagram. Uh, okay, so the sparkler was December, January. Okay, um, November was the stones. Okay, October was the dark forest. And then August was like the broken violet. Um, so I try to like switch up the saturation or warm and cool tones and uh, try to like have some variety in that. Uh oh. Did it? Okay. It, things dipped for a second and I was like, uh oh, did my connection? What is going on with this? Am I not? Oh no, I'm fine. <laughs> as, as I check. Um, but yeah, the, uh, you can keep your eyes open. Oh, good night. Yeah, feel, uh, the replay will be up. And a lot of times uh, I recommend to people that, you know, you, you watch uh, the, the dialogues on double speed. Because <laughs> there's a lot of, uh, of wait time. Um, what was I going to say? But I, I don't know. I just, I have so much fun. And it's really, really nice to, um, it's fun to do these live streams also because then I'm not, doing a lot of editing after the fact. And so sometimes that's just really, really fun and nice. Uh, but yeah, it's this, this color combination is different for me. And so it's, I try, I try to mix things up. Sometimes I might have a specific technique I want to try. And so then sometimes 
I, I have a collect, like a private Pinterest board with different inspiration photo ideas. And so sometimes I'm like, ooh, I think this month I wanted to play with, like, I was like, ooh, maybe I should look for flamingos because I haven't really just played with pink just to focus on the pink before. And so that could be really fun and different from what I've done. And uh, so sometimes I have a sense like, okay, I want to go in this color family. What can I find um, that I think inspires me? And then sometimes I see a photo and I immediately think of a technique that I want to try. And so then it's, it's fun to do that too. Uh, so I can't see the timer from here. <laughs> oh man, one of these days, I, the problem is like the streaming software I use, there's so many things you can do with it that I know like gaming streamers are able to do. So it would be really cool to, um, It'd be really cool to be able to make a, um, like get a timer that I put on screen so I can see it. And then we don't have the beeping. All right, I am going to attempt to move you to the stove. If we lose video or audio, I will come back and fix it. I've been able to fix it so far. <laughs> um, like it worked. Hopefully that didn't give awful like audio noises. Please let me know how that worked. So the flamingo yarn is back here. Um, and these burners are definitely different sizes. There's a big one in front and a smaller one in back. Um, so I have the heat on like medium low. And when it starts to get steamy, I might let it warm for a little bit and then add more water. But I want to give it some heat before adding water because I don't want things to spread and blend too much. So I'll set the timer for 10 minutes. And I'm going to bring this water right here is left over from the first paint we dyed. So I'm going to bring some water over. Ooh, what is my favorite technique? Ooh, that's a hard question. Okay, I'm bringing over two skeins of the twill. Ooh, but what is my favorite technique? I think it varies. Um, so like right now, I'm really into doing some like cool that kind of stuff where like, or just starting cold and then heating it up later um, because it makes it so much easier to do without flipping a super saturated colorway. But I think my favorite techniques in terms of the yarn that I love to use are, are just the things I like to do the most here. When I have something lowish immersion and add dry dye powder and sort of spread it out and layer color randomly, that's a favorite technique of mine. Another favorite would be um, the watercolor stuff when I add the liquid all over, whether I'm doing hearts and just layer colors that way. I think my favorite technique for knitting would be layering tonals to get the color I want. Um, so, yeah, but actually like some of the dry rub stuff, I'm pretty, pretty into, all right, I'm going to turn on the heat. Okay. And let that heat up before we get started. So what I think, what I think I'm going to do now is we've got the black, we've got the forest green. I think that I'm going to stick with flamingo pink, a little bit of tan jello and the green and the black. And we're going to go nuts and just have a party. <laughs> and I go nuts, I mean, I will be wearing safety equipment and you'll be behaving safely, but go wild with the color placement. Okay, so headphone users beware, but not the worst. All right, so maybe next time I do that, I will mute the audio first. 
I will do that. But actually, um, I am going to take a brief break, um, and so I will be muting. Um, and I'm going to insert an ad really quick. Uh, and yeah, you may not see an ad, but uh, oh, that's not the camera I wanted to hide. Uh, yeah, but so I will be back. And I had already muted myself. I'll be back in a couple minutes. <laughs> Hello, I'm back. Um, thank you all. <laughs> so that's the, uh, but I do see movement on the camera, which is good. It means it has a presence. Oh my goodness. Okay. <sighs> we. So I think the other thing that I, uh, I don't know if you guys are watching WandaVision. I have been obsessing over it lately. Oh man, I've never tried dyeing yarn inspired by a TV show. Um, and I'm not quite sure what I would, what I would do, but that could be kind of fun. Uh, even though my policy is always you don't mess with the mouse. Uh, and so I'd have to be careful with naming things, but I think, um, like, uh, there, let's just say, because I don't want to give any spoilers, but, um, there was, like, a, a sort of, like, theme song for a recent episode that I think would make a really, really fun color my name, but I'm sure there's going to be a hundred million of them. <laughs> uh, you're watching some older videos that came across the Mason Jar Gradient. Um, uh, potentially, um, oh, when I do like, oh, the, the attached gradient, um, probably, I think that lately I have not been doing things that are that labor intensive in terms of videos, mainly just because the filming time that I have has been greatly reduced, uh, because, uh, currently, and there's a chance that like they might bring the hybrid kids down to one cohort so there's a chance lucas could have full-time or almost full-time school in the next couple months but yeah the it's it's been um it's been challenging so since i no longer have what between like seven fifth between eight and three every day uh for filming that means that like the, uh, I have to be a lot more strategic in the things I do. And so I would really like uh, to do more gradients like that. I certainly have some uh, mason jar type videos that um, and color mixing things that would work really well as a gradient like that, uh, but uh, the, it's just they're separate from the tape. So uh, yeah, I've had to um, be very strategic about <laughs> about some techniques and things I use and I want to do more like self-striping stuff again and things like that it's just 
Yeah, I feel like everything just takes a lot longer than it used to, which is a little unfortunate. Uh, oof, and I am stretching <laughs> while I'm sitting here on the floor. Uh, but yeah, I was I was cutting, and I can't show you what I was working on because that'll be a surprise at some point. But I was using the Cricut all day, uh, and I am very pleased with my very simple little design. Um, and yeah, I, okay, it's steamy. You can't see it on camera. Well, you can see the steam on camera, but I can see it from here, so I need to stand up. But uh, I'm going to do something that feels very me, is the plan. Uh, and so I'm putting on the respirator mask. Oh, and I don't think you can see it, but the, this water, I think was like four cups of water with two tablespoons of white vinegar. I'm adding that to the subtle, to the flamingo feather. Maybe that's the name of that colorway. Uh, just so that way there's more water in there. Uh. <laughs> yeah, the, thankfully, my kids are, um, are recently turned five and seven. So I think as far as ages go, I've been pretty lucky. All right, I'm coming in to first reduce the heat to low. And we're going to come in with flamingo pink. And I'm going big. I haven't decided if I want to move it or leave it as like a speckly spread. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, I'll, I'll come and fix that in a second. Um, kind of digging these like speckles. So I'm, I'm, I guess, you know, when talking about what my favorite technique is, I enjoy letting the yarn decide what I do. And so doing this, I was like, ooh, these speckles are gorgeous. We're getting some spread. I thought it was going to come in and like shimmy, uh, shimmy the yarn around. And that's not what the, the yarn wants me to do to it, which is unfortunate because if I was doing that, then I wouldn't need some kind of yarn mop, which I don't have. Oh dear, that's bad. Oh man, I love that. So this worked really nice. This is working really nicely because that flamingo pink is so pastel that we got these gorgeous spread of speckles. Uh, if I wanted the speckles to be finer, I should have less water present. Okay, I've got the tangelo and I'm adding just little bits letting tiny amounts pop out. My vision for this yarn has completely changed um, from when I started. Uh, I thought I was going to go het and heavy with all these colors. Uh, and nope, that's not what I'm doing anymore. Like, I thought I was going to go in heavy with the black and the green, and I'm going to be subtle with those as well. 
I'll leave some in the trash. <laughs> And the thing that I love is that I might have an idea and, oh, see, like, there the tangel is heavier. Um, I might have an idea of what I want to do, but then I start adding the dye and see what the dye does on the yarn. I love, love letting that influence my decision. Okay, my, I'm almost out of turbulent. And for some colorways, the yarn base makes a difference. So tulle is such a high twist yarn. And we'll see eventually when we flip this, what's going on on the other side. But it is such a high twist yarn that, um, yeah, it, things like in stroll or something, the dyes might sink in more than they are here. Uh, so it's just really fun. I'm bringing in the green. Forest green is another one of my favorite colors. This color does break uh, with some like apple green. All right. <laughs> this is not what I thought I was going to do. Oh my gosh, I am in love though. This is so much fun. And so different from the first one. Okay, so uh, another little tip, always, always, always put the lids back on the jars when you're not using them. That way, like, if you trip and fall or something, then you the risks of things spreading are less. Funny, there's like... Oh, that's from one of the pinks. I think I saw this before with, I think I saw this before in, um, there was a time when I was going for like an antique colorway and there were like some micro speckles uh, from one of the dye powders. Um, and I'm sort of seeing that in here. So this is our, camera trying to get a good area okay I took some pictures of the dyeing process to include in the recap and if you follow me on Instagram did I set the timer I think I did um I'm about to post these to my stories so but I'm I'm a um old lady so it takes me a little bit I know I'm not that old. I'm mostly just joking. Um, no. But I definitely, as 
I don't even like. I'm at the very oldest like end of millennial, so I'm like in this like in between. I'm like the Oregon Trail generation. Okay, I just added some pictures to my stories. I might do a deck of a card. Do you love the color combo? Um, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think on camera, you don't really see the greens. And um, it would have been fun to bring in like an emerald green as well. That could have been really, really fun. Um, Sorry, I have an Etsy question. Oh, so one, um, one issue as a shopkeeper I have sometimes is I offer a um, add-on service for winding yarn people purchase in my shop into cakes. And so it's like a ball winding add-on and I even have in the title like for Chemnitz Creations Yarn. But occasionally uh, I have people who order the listing without ordering any yarn and then like I have to cancel it because there's nothing for me to wind, there's nothing for me to send. Um, and so, like, yeah, that, that's a problem. She could play yarn dying, I'm Rebecca from Chemnitz, I have a pre soaked yarn on my heart. <laughs> that is so sweet. It does look a lot like a deck of cards. Um, the colors are definitely more um, pink. I think it's hard with, especially at night when there's no natural light. And then also, like, the webcam doesn't do a good job of picking up all the colors. Um, but this is really fun. And it's so fun playing with things that are so completely different uh, from one another. I really, really enjoy it. Um, I'm like, the problem I'm having now is I'm like, I want to flip the yarn by the other side. Uh, this time, since I'm not going and moving the yarn a ton, I imagine that these colors are sinking through a fair amount. So it's very speckly right now, but I imagine there'll be some like wash and spread of color beneath because it's not that low immersion. So there is space for the colors to spread. Uh, but therefore, I imagine that I will flip it and add some more dye and then be done. Um, I think that, that that this is a faster turnaround because the pan is less crowded. And so this is the thing that I found. Like if I'm doing 100 grams of yarn and sometimes 200 grams, I don't have to flip the yarn as much. Trying 400 grams of yarn in a pan, it worked well with the technique we were doing. But a lot of times, depending on what I'm doing, I can flip the yarn a million more times to get the coverage that I want. And so I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but it's just, I'm learning. And I find myself tweaking things or trying to do something in a completely different way. And that's helping me grow as a dyer. And so that's why I love filming these videos because I find that I learn so, so much. And so if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, today's Wednesday. So a new video will be out on Friday. <laughs> um, but actually, there might be another new video out, um, probably not tomorrow. 
Uh, I have a Die Hot PS video to finish up, uh, which means that then I will release last month's on the public publicly. Uh, so I film this as once uh, one video a month series for um, Patreon, and patrons get early access, so they get to see it a month before I release it to the general public. But otherwise, like, um, yeah, the, then there's some like exclusive behind the scenes sneak peeks and, uh, and live streams and stuff. But all of the dyeing of yarn that I do eventually becomes like a dye cut weekly video. So uh, here's some in checking it out. All right, I'm getting impatient. <laughs> I'm like, I, I want I want to play with this. There's only two minutes left on the timer. But see, maybe there's a hint of pink. And there's some dye in there. So we'll, we'll help her, but yeah, like the blacks, like if I press on the black, I'm not seeing black dye moves, just some of the pinks mainly. So let's let. Do 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 do. Not bad. That's pretty. So as I said, they're spread because we have more water. So therefore, as the dyes dissolved, they sort of moved through the yarn a bit. Um, now, I don't need to add a ton more color, but I am going to add more color. Um, but first, I'm going to make sure that uh, Y'all can see. Cool. Um, you put a pillow against the wall for your back. Well, but it's, I like stretching. I think that it's like leaning over the counter sometimes is what hurts my back because I try not to like rub my shirt against the edge of the counter. So, yeah, I have a uh, glider chair that I got when I was pregnant with Ryder, and I love it. <laughs> uh, and so that actually helps uh, my back because I can shift. It's not of a glider, it's more just like a rocking armchair. But it's great because then I, uh, it just lets me move a little bit. Sometimes I wonder why I set timers. <laughs> if I'm not gonna, okay, there we go. That's the heaviness that I wanted. And the more you play, the more you'll find that different colors speckle differently, and some give you the may give you the effect that you want easier than others. Just make sure my hands are dry. And I am wearing a respirator mask, that's why I'm so muffled. Okay. With the tangelo. Whereas with the flamingo pink, I was like really heavy. The tangelo, I'm just trying to add some hints. Some pots, some feathers, if you will. I regret not having a yarn mop today. 
But also, I suppose that means I would be staying up a lot later. <laughs> I'll probably let the yarn cool overnight and then wash it in the morning. And so going super light with the black. Uh, the areas where I'm adding it, it's heavier. So these aren't like tiny specks. But this yarn base is a really good one for me to play with. Because since it is such low yardage, <laughs> uh, there it makes me less worried about balance. When there's 400 yards or 800 yards in a chain, then I get a little more two in my head, I suppose. And this is some forest green. This yarn is so different. So different from the first. Okay. And out of that. Nothing on the floor. That is good. I like to do a little check. Wiping down the counter. This is so fun. It is so different. The two colorways that we did could, from being like inspired by the same photo, almost, almost could not be more different. <laughs> No, the main, the main reason why when I'm sitting down here that I might have some trouble getting up is just because of the closeness to, like, where I'm sitting, there's not a ton of space between the wall and the counter, and then the laptop's on a chair, so it's just a, a little narrow. <laughs> but anyway, uh, at this stage, you know, I put a timer on for 10 minutes, and then... I'll probably turn off the heat and let things cool. And then tomorrow, I'll wash it off camera. Uh, <laughs> I don't usually film the washing for these dialogue live streams. But then once it's dry, I'll film a recap. And I will, usually what I do is I film the recap, then I edit it, and then I wait for three to four weeks to give all of you time to dye some yarn at home. And also inspired by this photo, which I'll make bigger now. Uh, and so then, oh dear, that's not what I wanted to do. Yeah, to give you time to dye yarn inspired by this photo. Uh, so then uh, I can try to include a bunch of your pictures in the recap because I think it is so fun to see how similar and different we all, the types of yarn that we create when we're inspired by one photo in terms of just the techniques and the colors and the yarn bases and the things people pick. So this is something that you could completely play around with with food coloring. It's very food coloring friendly. Uh, colorway black is hard with food coloring, but the rest 
is achievable with the food coloring. Maybe not sparkles, but uh, could be done that way. And so I just, I love seeing what different dyers come up with when they have one inspiration photo. Uh, and it's fun to contrast that with what I created. Now, of course, you are more than welcome to try to recreate exactly what I did or do your own thing. There's many options, but if you want the, to potentially be featured in the recap, uh, share pictures of the yarn that you dyed on Instagram with the hashtag Chemnitz Dye Along, uh, or look for the Flamingo photo on the Chemnitz Facebook page. The actual Facebook post is linked in the video description uh, and reply with a photo comment of your yarn. And then in mid to late March, <laughs> I'll pull pictures and then uh, release the recap. Um, and in theory, I release a new photo around the 15th of the month. Uh, this month was a little late, and I did a combo for uh, December, January. Uh, <laughs> a lot going on these last few months. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know yet what I'm going to pick for March. I don't know. So if you have suggestions for inspiration, um, inspiration themes, leave uh, comments down below. Uh, so, yeah. Yay! You the flamingo. I just love on, in this picture in particular, the contrast of color and the feathers and how there's everything from like a baby pink to this more orangey pink. Um, and so I am just really, really excited with what he's created. Um, and again, um, all like the video descriptions have so many links to my favorite tools and equipment to where you can find me on social media and all of that jazz. I'm on, also on Etsy and Patreon and yeah. <laughs> I would say that the best way to get in contact with me with a question is probably YouTube comments. That's the form that I check the most frequently. Uh, it, I used to uh, be able to easily see messages from Facebook and Instagram, but sometimes I get so many notifications that I might n might not even see that I had a message or I it might get, I might not, yeah, I might um, see it when I'm not at like my computer or something to reply and then not be able to see it later. So uh, I do try to check for questions um, very frequently, but also with YouTube comments, if you ask a question and I reply and you ask a follow-up question and I don't reply within like a day, uh, leave a new comment versus a threaded comment because I, uh, like if I only know if there's a, like a reply in a thread if I see a specific notification, whereas I filter all comments on all my videos by things I haven't replied to. So I'm able to scan through things that way. Uh, so. That's just a handy little tip if you're trying to get in contact with me. But anyway, I think this is the longest stream I've done in a long time. It has been a minute uh, since I have done something. What are we at? Like, oh, it's been only two and a half hours. My, my time thing is saying something like weird uh, on the monitor. But yeah, I guess I, if I started at, I guess it's only two and a half hours. Still the longest stream I've done in a while. Um, in the past, there were times when I've done some six hour streams. It's been a while since I've done that. Uh, and also like just without having full days with the kids at school, the, the time to do things like that are, uh, I don't really have as much right now, but hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to come back and do that again. But it's just hard when everyone's home. It's a lot easier to do a big, long live stream when my house is empty. <laughs> but anyway, thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope that you have enjoyed hanging out and yeah, I guess I will chat with you all soon. I'm trying to think. There might be, 
I don't know when I'm going to do this one for the crib unboxing. I received one package, but not the other, and there's been like a delay, so I'm kind of waiting to have everything. But I also have some older knit crate packages that have trickled in um, that like have, because things have come in at like different times. So I'm like, I don't even know what months I have in some of these bags right now. Oh yeah, I'm about to head off. Um, but yes, hello, hello. Uh, oh, I'm so glad that I could help. I'm really glad I could help. And huge social distance hugs from me to all of you. Um, yeah, the, this year, and by this time when I'm saying this year, I mean like the last 12 months. <laughs> yes, good night, everyone. And uh, yeah, I hope, I hope to be able to do more and more live streams again because I love doing this. Good night. And then, uh, if you watch a lot of my live streams, you know that this is the awkward point when I wait. <laughs> uh, I wait for to catch up with the delay uh, because it always cuts off if I just stop right away. So good night again, but it probably cut that off or not because I'm still talking a little bit. <laughs>